Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ask Kate brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today I'm going to continue answering questions here that I've been answering in emails that I receive from families. Um, and today's email actually came from outside of the United States. It's actually quite common for me to get emails from people who are living outside of the States, um, really from all over the world. Um, and so I, I appreciate that about my work that CTF and the resources we have um, are accessible to families no matter where they live. So let's get started. So I got this email from a dad. Um, he is from and living in South Africa. His daughter is uh, quite young still, not even a year old. And she had several suspicious uh, skin finding spots um, that looked like what could have been the cathode LA spots that we see in NF1. Um, however, none of them or just a few of them were really large enough to qualify as being the, the right size. As we've talked about before with cafe au lait spots, they need to be bigger than about a half a centimeter in diameter in order to um, really be considered something that we can count. Um, but what I liked about this conversation I had with this gentleman is that it really highlights that there's a lot of, can, can be a lot of confusion around making a diagnosis, particularly in young children, and that it's not always uh, very straightforward. It can be, but it is not always that way. So their pediatrician had taken a look and not seen any other indications of NF1, but the skin findings were concerning enough that they thought that they should pursue genetic testing. Um, the genetic testing was actually uh, recommended by the pediatrician. And so uh, the father had just reached out to me to talk initially to ask that um, whether I knew if the testing available in South Africa was any different than testing available in Germany where they happened to be visiting um, uh, for the week. And so he was wondering whether he should try to have this done while they were in Germany. Um, and so he had found the YouTube videos and had been reading a little bit about NF and was just kind of confused and had some questions. So the first thing I had to explain is that I really wasn't able to, to tell him if testing in South Africa would be any different than testing in Germany. Um, I'm simply not familiar enough with their medical systems to know um, how that would operate in either country. Um, but I did go on to explain that we always recommend genetic testing be done under the supervision of a genetic counselor or a medical geneticist. So the testing itself is getting more and more accurate. We know this. We know that we can say that we get about 95 to 98% accuracy in terms of results. Uh, but because it's not 100%, if his daughter was tested and a negative result came back, but she still had these suspicious skin findings, most likely that they would want to continue to follow her as suspicious of NF1. Um, alternatively, the test results could come back sh and show a mutation that we know to be associated with milder forms of NF. Um, so essentially what I was explaining is that the genetic testing is, is quite complex. It's um, hardly ever just a yes or a no, um, depending on the situation. And so that's why we recommend seeing a specialist who can really walk through with the family, both before and after testing, um, what to expect and what the results are, are really telling us. I also included some information we had from our website about Cafe LA spots, including the, the newer um, downloadable PDF we have. It's a couple pages long and it's specifically about Cafe LA spots. If you have not seen that or checked that out, I would definitely recommend going over to our resource library and taking a look at that. We, um, Dad had also asked me just about um, how an NF can impact different people. Um, essentially his question, which is one I get from parents a lot, was um, how bad is this gonna be if my kid has NF1? So as many of you are already familiar with, the variability in NF is one of the most difficult things to manage for particularly for parents of young kids because there's still so much of the future ahead of them and there is so much that we don't know. It's one of the reasons that CTF is committed to, um, to research that's going to tell us, hopefully, link up more of what we call genotype and phenotype, which we've also talked about before, which is the type of mutation that somebody has, what can that tell us about how they might be impacted in their health by NF. And so that's, that's we know some of those connections, but there are a lot that we don't understand yet, and that's why we're working on that. We ended up um, going on to have a longer conversation and um, some back and forth. He sent me some photos of his daughter's um, skin, which I generally discourage families from sending me any medical records. Um, it's simply not appropriate for me to give medical advice or to look at scans or images and say, you know, make a diagnosis or things of that nature. Um, 
but I'm, I'm always happy to, to help where and how I can. So dad did say that they were going to be seeing a genetic counselor, um, but he went on to ask some more specific questions about cafe LA spots. And so I wanted to just share briefly a little bit of that with you guys. So first, he wanted to know if the cafe layer spots are, are smaller than the, the half a centimeter size, are they still considered cafe lay spots? So I explained that the reason there's a size requirement for cafe lays is because it can be easy to confuse them with other normal or even abnormal but different skin findings. Um, an example could even be freckling. Um, so essentially part of the definition of the cafe lay spot is the size so that something that's much smaller would not be called a cafe lay spot. Um, in the statement um, that we have in our cafe lay spot uh, PDF that says that it's rare to have multiple cafe lays without an underlying condition, there is an, uh, an assumption in that statement that those cafe lay spots meet the sizing criteria. Um, he also asked if the size if the spots themselves would increase in size with age. And it was interesting that I don't know that I've ever been asked that question before, and it's pretty rare these days for me to get a question I have not answered before. So essentially, the cafe lay spots themselves are not going to change drastically in size, but as a child gr um, grows, they, they could actually appear to get um, uh, smaller because the child is getting bigger. Um, so even in very young children with NF1, we would see the cafe lays being greater than that half a centimeter size. <clears throat> also, he wanted to know if misdiagnosis of cafe lay spots is common and what type of doctor he, I would recommend um, to confirm whether these are cafe lay spots or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the skin exam can be very difficult for any type of doctor, no matter their specialty, if they're not familiar with NF1 and if they haven't done a lot of skin exams. So seeing the picture that he had sent me, I could see why there was some concern, but also a lot of confusion. So the size of the spots on his daughter did not really fit with the size that we expect for cafe au lait spots, but the color and what seemed to be lack of texture on in the photo I was sent um, does does fit with a cafe au lait spot. So I also explained that it's not a certain type of doctor that would be best, um, but actually just a doctor who has seen a lot of kids with NF1. So whether that's a geneticist or a neurologist or a neuro-oncologist, even a pediatrician, if they've seen a lot of kids with NF1 and done these skin exams, they're gonna be more inclined to, to be able to give an accurate assessment of what they're seeing um, on his daughter's skin. So interestingly, um, they did go ahead and they saw a geneticist. And it turns out that some of the spots, which I couldn't tell from a photo, did have some texture, they were raised a bit, and the, um, the geneticist was uh, not convinced they were cafe lay spots. Um, so the family's still gonna pursue testing, but it's looking like perhaps NF1 is not going to be this little girl's diagnosis. And I just, I highlight that to say that in a photo, I was not able to, to tell that. And that is why it is so important that families are seen by uh, experienced NF professionals whenever possible, um, because a, an in-person, a good skin exam by someone who understands NF1 is really invaluable. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video today that um, just kind of going through an email. Um, I love hearing from you guys. I always ask permission before I share any, um, any of your questions in these video formats. So as always, please leave your comments below, send me an email. I'd love to hear from you and have a fantastic day. See you next time.